So thanks for inviting uh, us. Thanks for inviting me to this um, meetup. Um, it's quite nice to be uh, interacting with the community. And today for you, I want uh, to share a subject on MATLAB with Python. Uh, and I'd be quite interested to, to get your feedback on how you perceive this subject and how you uh, believe you could leverage uh, some of the uh, you know goodies of uh, this uh, Python community. So I'd like to start off with uh, some you know um, common uh, things we've heard that you know it's MATLAB versus Python, MATLAB versus open source, and to quote one of our user at the conference saying that you know we use both. At the end of the day, uh, we hear that MATLAB cannot do this and uh, open source cannot do that. And there's and the end of the day, tools are tools. So um, I recommend you to look at this uh, interesting um, presentation from Gustavo. Uh, and well, I'll give you my tech. Uh, obviously, it's a, it's a corporate message, but uh, I, I really welcome uh, from all of you some some you know personal feedback, and um, I'll try to make it that as interactive interactive as possible. So don't hesitate to interrupt me, Gareth, if you have anything you want uh, to share. So today, as I said, uh, we are going to build together a small application. Uh, it's it's a kind of a dummy uh, example. It's just um, looking at the weather uh, and uh, predicting the air quality. And it's uh, leveraging our interrupt between uh, MATLAB and Python. Um, as I've said, you can find the code uh, on GitHub. This is the repository from my colleague Ezagor. So you just can go there and uh, you know git clone it um, if you know what that means or just download the zip and so that you can uh, follow along and have some fun with me uh, during this session um, this is the plan for our agenda um, i broke it down into three parts the first one being the data access uh, the, se the second is co-execution that's going to be to, that's going to be the core of our presentation and uh, in this section, we'll see you know, in both ways how to call MATLAB from Python uh, and uh, Python from MATLAB. And the last part would be about deployment. But again, like don't hesitate uh, during those parts to just ask questions. So let us start with data access. And I'm going to uh, tell a bit about the use case we're going to uh, see today. So you go to openweathermap.org and what you'll be able to uh, get is an API key in order to access different services, web services uh, that consist out of uh, current weather. Um, those are, you know, uh, numerical data that are uh, extracted um, with a, a scene, you know, Python wrapper um, from JSON, from uh, textual information and translate it into uh, something numeric that we can uh, deal with. We will also look at hourly forecast. And all of those are you know, geolocalized uh, information uh, based on the, the city you want to, uh, to see the, the weather from. And um, when we see hourly forecast and historical weather, uh, we are dealing with time series. So there are issues about uh, sampling and uh, you can even think in terms of uh, synchronizing, detrending, stuff like that. So numer numerical stuff. The first uh, strategy that you could put in place, and that's probably something you might do naturally, you know, regardless of whether it's with Python or with uh, interacting between uh, any tools uh, you have, it could be to just simply read and write some uh, files on disk. So you can do that with CSV, uh, you can do that with Excel, but what I would recommend is that you leverage some uh, optimized uh, format, such as uh, Apache Parquet. Um, so Apache Parquet, it's a, it's a file format that has been uh, optimized for uh, memory efficient data access for tabula tabular data. So as soon as you have you know, time series, like what we'll see today, temperature, uh, you can write some uh, Parquet file with Parquet write, and then uh, uh, on the other end, in Python, you can just read those files um, directly into a pandas data frame. So that's one way, uh, and you probably have seen also this uh, small video from Gareth, which is quite nice and uh, very educative for us to just see simply how you can, um, um, I would say, more as asynchronously exchange uh, data and information with colleagues. And uh, all of this is uh, relying on um, 
a project called Apache Error. So both of those projects are hosted by the Apache uh, Software Foundation that is, um, you know, promoting uh, open source software. And MathWorks happens to uh, contribute to this project. So like if you want to go and look at on GitHub, uh, you can see also the MATLAB wrappers um, to, this, um, to this Apache Error. So just a note on the fact that, you know, it's not very well known, but MathWorks uh, do uh, contribute to open source and we leverage a lot of open source. So um, just a quick note on that. So that's uh, for the first uh, you know, introduction to our subject today. And also it's... Um, yeah, interrupt yeah. you here. Before you move into the current execution, so the data access, it's interesting. I think the question uh, that uh, came here is, um, which data types are automatically supported out of the box? I think this is a pretty common question. So I think strings are supported, uh, matrices are, but what, what do they look like when you move into the Python world and vice versa? So the parquet is nice for MATLAB data tables, um, but Python na na natively doesn't have uh, an equivalent. You need an additional library, which is pandas for the data frame. So what types do you have? And is there a place where we can see this information? Yeah, indeed. So you're already ahead of the curve, I would say, because that's one of the biggest issue, right? Like when you want to exchange between different languages, different tools, what you want to uh, pay attention to, first of all, is how you exchange data, right? And what type of data are uh, supported one language versus the other. Uh, you need to be aware of that. Uh, so that's going to be one of the first thing we will capture in the co-execution. Uh, and I will point you to um, a lot of, um, well, let me do that right now. I will point you to um, some reference to um, our website so that you can see how, how you can find those kind of information yourself. Um, so if you go to, um, oh, I cannot see my screen. Yeah, yeah. To this web page, um, to the external language interfaces, um, you will see that um, you can, first of all, go to uh, Python libraries in MATLAB. So that's one way around. That's uh, going to be the first scenario that we investigate today. And then there's another scenario that is calling MATLAB from Python. So in both directions, you need to, to pay attention to data types. And so we've uh, refined a bit this. Um, this documentation since 20B, uh, you have um, a lot more information on, you know, the mapping of data types. And then you have also a few uh, featured examples on how you can pass uh, Python numerics variable, uh, strings, list, uh, tuples, dictionary, stuff like that. So those are really basic uh, Python data types, right? Thanks. Um, so then the, the other question that it also kind of comes through is, uh, and maybe you'll touch upon it a, a little bit further, but um, uh, is there a way, so for example, let's say I have my own custom data type, can I do that mapping automatically? So I understand that certain things are supported out of the box, but uh, we're creative beings in our companies and we don't have uh, iterate to our own data types. And mm -hmm. is there a way to uh, clean and easy way to map the two worlds? So what you would need then is to uh, build on top of um, those uh, classes, so those Python objects we have in MATLAB, uh, like this one here. You see you have a Python array. So the Python array, it doesn't show so well here. So here you see a Python array. You can build on top of that, right? Like it's a specific class, a specific object. You can modify it uh, and you can you know, build on top of those. That's probably what I would recommend. Fantastic. Thanks. So. I think, um, Gareth, you've, you've um, introduced us this idea of exchanging, uh, you know, pure uh, raw data uh, and data files between colleagues. But uh, here we're going to try to see how there are limitations in, in doing so, because this is, as I mentioned earlier, a little asynchronous in the sense that, uh, you know, as soon as you're going to change something in your processing, then you'll need to generate the data again and it's going to be a mess uh, quite quickly. So that's actually some of the motivation for a more synchronous way of, um, you know, collaboration between colleagues and also for one person that happens to know a bit of both MATLAB and Python. It's also quite handy uh, to be able to uh, interact at the language level. And that's uh, going to be the core of this part. So the scenario we're going to take is first we're going to fetch uh, the weather data, um, do some preparation in Python. 
And then we're going to go in MATLAB for the modeling. So let's say I developed this uh, weather.py file and I hand it over to my colleague. In this case, you know, it could be Heather. And she she wants to um, just call those functions without having to know a lot about how the code is implemented. And she only has to, to go and look at the, uh, the function names. That's it. Um, and then she can develop her own model in MATLAB. Uh, all of the modeling part that she's uh, completely comfortable with, but then she can hand it over back to me, uh, send me those models in uh, as a M file, and then I can call those uh, models uh, using the MATLAB engine API, and that is going to be the second part of uh, how we show, uh, you know, the other way around calling MATLAB from Python. And then you get back the data. And finally, uh, one important scenario that uh, is the core of the last part of this presentation is deployment. Because uh, at some point, you know, you might uh, want to reuse some of those algorithms and deploy them inside of an enterprise IT system or, you know, in, in different kind of ways. So deployment is essential and we'll talk a little bit about that um, at the end. So I'm going to continue with um, this and some of the motivation. All right, so I've talked about it already. You want to reuse some existing code. Uh, you might need some functionalities that are available in uh, Python, like you know machine learning and deep learning. Uh, you might not be aware, but there are some of those already available in MATLAB. Uh, maybe you want to try out those in Python. Um, but um, yeah, uh, we, we will go through this uh, idea of you know doing machine learning in in MATLAB as well, and you want to collaborate. <coughs> so. The example we're going to take is, uh, and I will go straight to the code after that. Uh, so I'm just here uh, streamlining some of um, the, the application, some of the steps. The first uh, step is going to be leveraging this uh, weather.py um, file that is in Python and uh, a few functions like this one, the get current weather. So we are going to get the current weather, pass it, uh, and prepare it for a later pr um, prediction. All right, so I suggest that we switch directly to more of a live coding. And now also, if you want to ask a question or like, you know, uh, interrupt me, that's fine. So, so there, here's a question while you're switching. So that's good. We'll give you some breathing space. Um, I think uh, you just mentioned that uh, it's really nice to see the combination of MATLAB and Python. And I think it follows a pattern with other languages that historically MathWorks has supported. Um, but Yodis is asking, what about Julia? So are there any plans for Julia integration, <laughs> given that the more so focus on scientific computing? So today, the reason why we uh, see so much uh, interest and benefit in um, in supporting Python, it, it's because we hear about it like a lot. Like uh, uh, when we go out and, uh, you know, in any type of industries, whether it's uh, automotive, aeronautics, like our traditional industries, but also uh, in finance, obviously, uh, we see a lot of Python. And to be honest, I we don't see a lot of Julia. So right now we really want to focus our effort on that. Um, I, I don't, I cannot say, you know, about the future, I don't know um, whether or not we would consider other languages. I know that um, if there were another language, I would say probably R uh, for statistics, uh, because it's again like um, bringing a lot of differentiation in this field. And um, well, I think that, you know, Julia is, to answer your question straight, it's, it's not, uh, we don't have plans for that right now. And very good. So then there, there was another question that came up is you mentioned something at the beginning of your talk was uh, MathWorks contributes to open source projects. So that is a big plus and nice to hear. But I think the question that comes through is um, are there active projects or repositories that MathWorks controls that you would like the community to contribute towards? So maybe that you've got ongoing projects and instead of the development team at the MathWorks controlling it 100%, are there projects of that nature that others can contribute? And if yes, how, where would we get involved? Or how? Yep. So I think, um, you know, you can go directly to uh, our GitHub page, uh, the MathWork. So, so there's a reference architecture. I'm not sure that it's the best place to contribute. Um, I'd rather go to, you know, see here the arrow project is uh, directly on top. Um, you have some with uh, models. So I think one of the 
easiest way for users and uh, you know the community to contribute is around uh, the modeling and the development of new algorithm. So here it's in uh, uh, physical modeling, so that's, that's more on the simulating side. But uh, I think you get the similar types of um, um, model repositories for. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to find it like this, but um, for deep learning, for instance. Um, so I think those are some areas where you know you see a lot in deep learning of uh, uh, places where there's a, um, a need for a, a zoo of uh, lots of uh, models. And so if you find your own model that works well, it's really great that you can share it with others. And we would definitely, I think, welcome a, a pull request uh, on some of those. So like if you just want to fork one of them and, and then uh, make a pull request. Um, I, I think we've seen that already. Um, I'm, I'm not very aware of those particular domains, so cannot answer precisely, I'd say. Th thank you for sharing the link. I appreciate it. So uh, please continue. All right. So getting back to our good old MATLAB, um, we used to have uh, this, ver this um, function called PI version, which is um, not recommended anymore. So if you you know uh, type the help, the F1 button, uh, we recommend instead to use PI env. And uh, PyEnv has different ways of uh, uh, coding sequences. So you can just, uh, you know, oh, and here you go. I want to go to PyEnv. So um, PyEnv, you can just call it like this, and you'll see, well, join is going to, un to comment this and uncomment this one. And what it will do is that it's going to fetch um, the, the Python, uh, the first Python interpreters that you have available from your command line. So it's it's quite similar to you know if I would start a command line like this and I would ask him uh, where Python and it's going to give me a list uh, with with a bunch of um, uh, executables that are uh, found in the um, Windows Pass. Uh, so if if you want to you know modify your Windows Pass, you can just go and ask for the environment variables. Uh, so there so there are some uh, tricks to set up. You want to go to environment variables and pass. So this is where you would find a way to make Windows aware of the location of your Python uh, interpreter. So here, as you can see, I have an Anaconda 3 and I have a Python 3.8. Um, and it appears in this order. So the first one that it finds is the 3.7 uh, here, the 3.7 being Anaconda. All right, but then if I would want to change it, what I would need to do is to ask for version and then the number of the version so that it's 3.8, for instance, and then it's going to switch to this one. Uh, another way to do so is also to <coughs> give it directly um, the location of uh, the executable. So here, I can either type a version or, uh, yeah, the name of the, the the number of the version, sorry, and the or the path of the executable. So here, if I type this, now it's going to go back to my previous one. So you can only do that um, as long as it's not loaded. And there's also here another uh, information about the exec execution mode. For now, we just you know not care about this. It's only in moments when you have uh, conflicts uh, with libraries, with third-party libraries like NumPy, for instance. Uh, then you might want to go out of process and switch to uh, you know uh, execution mode out of process, and that's documented again in here. So execution mode. Um, but enough for today. Uh, let's concentrate on this and uh, the calling sequences. So you use this um, py um, small you know um, argument and py dot. Uh, the name of the module. So you have in Python a math module, and inside of the math module, you have a function, a square root function. So that would be the way for you to call the square root function from the math module from Python. All right. So you just call it like this. You pass it the argument and it gives you the answer. And then it's doing automatically, as you can see, the data marshalling. So here uh, we pass in a double, but then you know, Python understand that, uh, well, you, you give me this, but I can understand that uh, I need to translate it to whatever data type uh, Python is requiring for the square root function. Now you can have more complicated, uh, right now you see like uh, name equal value, 
kind of a way of uh, um, asking, you know, uh, for for specific arguments to Python, like this one in 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 the text wrap um, <coughs> module. You have a wrap function, and you know it's just breaking down a, a string into uh, a certain sequence of, uh, as you will see, two two uh, two characters. But then here the problem is that, hmm, there's a yeah, there's an error. So well, we, we, we don't panic, uh, we, we read the error, and we have also some, some quite explicit here uh, forwarding from the Python error. That's going to be okay. Uh, it happens a lot, so you need to deal with that. And uh, here it's telling you that you need to use integer. So that's the reason why, you know, here uh, we're going to pass an int 8 as an argument, and now it's not going to be a problem anymore. Now what you get is a list. Um, you get a list, a Python list, that is a, a specific data type, as you can see here. It's uh, this Python list, all right. Um, and um, well, it's just giving you, see, a sequence of two characters um, spread into this list. All right, let's go to more interesting stuff. So those are the basics, right? Um, now, um, I might have shared with you this uh, API key. I don't know if I did. If I didn't, uh, no, that's not here. Let me try to go back to up uh, here. And today, since we are, you know, very intimate, I feel after like 20 minutes of talking, me alone, uh, I'm going to share with you my uh, access key. And you shouldn't do that, right? Like you never do that. But today I do that. That's okay. Just between uh, us. So. <clears throat> We will cut that out in the recording. Do not worry. Exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm just going to withdraw this. Uh, it has been going on since the Expo, uh, MATLAB Expo, and I, I left it uh, live. So uh, you should still be able to, to use it for a couple more days. And then I will cut it out. Um, so you call the um, API key like this. Uh, use the read table, all right, uh, and uh, translate it into a, a string. And it's not working because I don't have it in my pass, and it's here. So I stored it as a um, access, access key dot txt, starting with key, and then the the you know the strings that I've shared with you. So now it should work. All right, and now we are going to fetch the JSON data. So now it's starting to be a little more interesting. Um, so here we are starting to get data from Boston in the US and passing in also the API key dot key. So here, this um, API key that I just shared with you, and we are getting a, a Python dictionary. That's not quite convenient, right? Because it's like a very complicated nested uh, data uh, structure and uh, well, we don't want to deal with that. So the first thing we will do is that we're going to call a second uh, function, the parse current JSON, and we don't know, need to know more about this, right? Like we can just call it like this. And uh, you know whatever Heather has developed, uh, it's fine, it's working. So as long as we maintain a good relationship with my coding Heather, this should be fine. Otherwise, I need to dig in the code, and then it's uh, more complicated. But for now, it's it's working quite well. Um, so now let's look at some of the questions you've been asking, uh, Gareth, about data marshaling between the two. Here, uh, a quite natural way to uh, represent a dictionary from Python in MATLAB is a structure. So if we call it like this, uh, you can see that. Um, and here I think I'm going to uh, probably clear all output. Yeah, so that. Otherwise, it's a spoiler. You see already the answer before I even uh, execute it. That's not fun. But so here uh, you can see that um, each of those fields found an equivalent in MATLAB, uh, all but the CD and the current time. And so the CD here, you'll see, we need to convert it manually. So it doesn't recognize uh, by default because it could take two, just could take two types of uh, data, uh, either strings or characters. So what we do right now, we don't translate it uh, manually. Um, automatically, you need to do it manually. And uh, here you go. I have uh, written a small helper function at the end of this uh, script. Live script, and you can see that then it's translating everything into a table. It's a bit easier to read. So that is for um, you know simple structure like this. Uh, now what we'll do is uh, we will do the same for forecast. So what we'll get here 
is a pi.array.array, pi.array.array, sorry. And um, we will parse it a bit. So this Python array, the forecast, the temperature, uh, it's, uh, you know, you can translate it, this into a matrix of double. Yeah, right. So that's quite convenient and it makes sense. Uh, and then the other thing is here we have current time. So we saw previously that um, the current time, uh, I, I think I did not process it manually uh, in the previous example. It was just, you know, as a string and we need to apply some um, some functions to that. So what we'll do is that uh, we'll use the cell phone uh, because here we are going to to catch a, a cell. A cell is a is a um, container in MATLAB that would be mapping quite well the idea of a list because a list in Python it's a heterogeneous container. So you can have different data types. You can have strings. You can have doubles. Um, I mean uh, floats, the equivalent to double to double in Python. You can have different types of data. So since we don't know uh, for beforehand what we will get. Uh, here we get um, a list of strings, but we didn't know it was uh, homogeneous. So what we'll do is that right now it's a cell and we are translating this cell here like this into a string. Here we are applying string to the cell. And what we do afterwards is we apply date time to this string uh, and then we get, you know, a, a good uh, date time um, variable type in MATLAB. And now we can plot it. So as you can see, uh, not such a good weather in uh, in the forecast for um, for Boston. Oh, but I've, I heard from my colleague that it's very very hot right now in terms of degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what that means, but I think it's about 30, 30, more than thirty degrees. So it's really really hot. So it seems like it's going to go down. So afterwards, some uh, pre-processing with the live task. I'm not going to annoy you a lot with that because I think you, you you guys know already about some of the goodies about uh, live task. Here what we gather are data that are sampled every three hours uh, in terms of forecast. So one cool thing to do is to uh, um, have a new sampling every um, every hour. So that's um, you know very easy to do. Uh, what we can do as well is to remove the trend. That's a bit visual. Um, <coughs> There's, a, there's an app, there's a live task for that. So you can see there was some trend in the data. We can remove it. Anyway, that's some basic. And then in the end, uh, what we do is that we have this prep data function uh, in here uh, that enables us to prepare the data to gather it as a table. And uh, as a developed a model, an air quality model for me, it's a classification network quite complicated with a ton of data. I think she's been uh, hammering this data for quite some time on a very large cluster, on a Hadoop cluster with one terabyte of historical data. Uh, she's using tall MATLAB data type for that. We're not going to go into that today, uh, but I would recommend you to watch some of her video videos if you're interested in that. And then, so we are loading this model. Uh, where is it? It's, it's probably here somewhere. It's here. It's a MATLAB model that we see. And what we can do, we can just call the predict uh, function on this model uh, on with the current data, and it's predicting us an an, an LC. Whew, don't move to Boston. So that's it for the first part. Now what we can do is uh, develop a small predict air quality uh, function uh, that you will see in another repository, the second one, and. This is meant to be shared with colleagues and that will go to the next part of the presentation. That is how we can share uh, models and predictions uh, with Python colleagues. So, so I will we'll stop it for, them, mm -hmm. for now if you have questions. So there's a couple of questions that have come through. Is, um, you called out um, uh, NumPy. Can you maybe share a few more words of how to work between MATLAB and NumPy arrays? Uh, mm -hmm. I think uh, what would be best is that I have some examples in the next section on that, on how you can pass uh, NumPy arrays to um, to MATLAB tables. Um, ah. That's and and I mean, theoretically it would be quite seamless, right? Like you, you you shouldn't care so much. Like you call double on a um, on a NumPy array on an what we call internally an ND array, 
and it's directly translating it into a matrix. So it, it's in principle, it's quite seamless. Very good. Um, and then the other question, I think you mentioned something along the lines, and maybe this is a clarification question, that you said there's incompatibilities with NumPy arrays and there's this in-process, out-process. Can you maybe oh. speak a little bit more about yeah. what, what that is and what, so what you meant by that? Yeah, it would be good to maybe look a little bit at the documentation at this stage and um, so look at, you know, um, how we can handle uh, pum, 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 problems or with setups and, and stuff like that because, you know, it can happen quite a lot. So here you have a, a page specifically for that out of process execution mode. So this is how you set it up with your pyenv before you load uh, the Python environment. <clears throat> you set up the execution mode to out of process. The reason for that is that um, what you'll see, uh, pop, pop, pop. I don't think it's so clearly stated here. Well, you just see the results. But uh, um, the reason for that is because sometimes you uh, could have some libraries like NumPy, you know, they are basing on some of the same underlying C libraries as we are, uh, like BLAS, LAPAC, stuff like that. So for linear algebra, and sometimes when you have two uh, softwares that are trying to grab to the same library, that can that can just result in a boom. It, it, it's it's uh, it can have it can cause problems. That's uh, not magic. It's uh, it's numerical computing. So in order to solve this, um, because we cannot know with every library that is out there what dependencies they will have, uh, we introduced this uh, out of process mode. So that if you uh, fall into such cases, you have a way of debugging and working nonetheless. Now, I would recommend not to do that um, like all the time um, because it comes with a um, with performance uh, trade off. You know, like a, 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 um, um, an additional you know exchanging between processes data. So very very good. And then there's another question, which is maybe do you have some uh, best practices around um, so say I work in a team where there's multiple Python environments and I want to bring it into MATLAB are there tips and tricks of switching between the Python environments I think you showed pyenv is that the way to switch quickly or do I have to unload reload things uh, and maybe that's a lack of the the, the uh, usability from a previous version of MATLAB share a few words on that so if you are from your MATLAB environment and you want to handle different uh, version of Python, indeed, you, you need to, to change them like this. Um, now, sorry. Um, here, um, indeed, you, you need to restart as soon as you've um, started the, the, you know, the connection with uh, Python, if you want to change the version right now, unless you are in out of process mode, because as soon as you start it in process, they are bound. You know, both process like it's in the same process. So we have a method for terminating the out of process, but we don't have the same for the in process. So uh, right now, like if you would want to have some flexibility, I guess that would probably be another use case for this out of process model. Thank you. Very good. All right. Do we want to go to the next section? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here I'm just summarizing some of it. I will send you the slide, and so we don't need to spend so much time on that. Same for for here. Uh, if you want to know more about data science, you have lots of good videos from Ezer online. Uh, so let's go straight to the next part. Um, motivation. I think you you figured it out uh, so far. Installation. I'm not going to speak a lot about it. Um, here, you what you just need to know is uh, there's a engine. Um, inside of your uh, MATLAB installation. So if you type inside of MATLAB, and I'm going to do that right now, if you type MATLAB root, uh, that's going to be the location where um, your MATLAB is installed. And so inside of this folder, what you'll find is a, a, a folder called extern. In this folder, you have engines and you have two engines, the Python and Java engine. You go and change directory inside of this uh, folder and you uh, execute the setup.py file uh, with the method install. And that is going to install uh, the this 21A uh, MATLAB engine, the API for Python. And afterwards, what you need to do 
is you simply so do I have a, like a comment somewhere here? So what you need to do is here, if I have a Python uh, interpreter, you go and you type import matlab.engine. And I guess I shouldn't have done that because now we cannot read. So I'm going to take another terminal that is not transparent because it's geeky, but it's uh, not very useful. Is it big enough? No, it's big. Now it's great, yeah. All right. So what you need to do first is import matlab.engine. That's it. And what you can do first is uh, to declare with matlab.engine, uh, the, there are two or three or, or more than that, actually, um, functions. Um, the first one that would be connect to MATLAB. Afterwards, you have uh, lots of them, and I wasn't aware until now that there were so many uh, methods. But the one you need to know is uh, start MATLAB or connect to MATLAB. So I'm going to uh, start MATLAB and it's going to start a separate uh, MATLAB session. So that's going to be, you know, a uh, direct way to <coughs> interact with MATLAB. So take a go. All right. And um, why is it all blank? I typed control L. So M dot, now you can do whatever you want inside of this. Um, you can ask him, well, what is the current uh, working directory? All right, here I am. Uh, you can ask him for the square root function. All right, 42. And then, oh no, it's going to prompt an error. So again, don't panic, that's going to be okay. Um, there's um, here some description about what is wrong. And again, it's about data type. Like it's mostly like the case when you're asking for um, function transfer between MATLAB and Python, that's mostly the case. So what you need to do here is to specify, uh, so use either type 42.0, because you know we don't have uh, here any uh, input arguments uh, for integer, so you pass it a float and then it's working. All right, so there's another way as well. It's uh, you pass it float from 42. Oh. So, so, so yeah, there's a question as you're showing this that came from Yotis, which is interesting. So it's good that that works. We're, we're much more relieved. We don't panic. Um, yep. The question was, uh, can we install the MATLAB engine for multiple versions of MATLAB? Or is this something like a separate Python environment needed for each version of MATLAB? Uh, you, yes, you can. And for that, so you would need to go to this other side of the documentation here, see how to call MATLAB from Python. And you have here install MATLAB Engine API. Uh, you can install it in non-default uh, location. Uh, and where is it? Blah, 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 blah. Troubleshooting. There's somewhere, I think it's probably going to be here. Um, that you can have different versions here, 19A and or 19B. And see, so you can have, uh, you, you need to pass it a prefix like this. You, you not only call Python setup.py install, but also the prefix on where you want to uh, store it, because otherwise it's going to be, uh, you know, stored, all of those versions are going to be stored on the same, in the same place. So they are going to overwrite each other. So if you want to do that, you need to pass it this prefix. That's all. That's all. Thanks. So um, what we can do is to go a little deeper and open a IPython notebook like this one, and do what we wanted is to um, you know call now this function developed by Ezer, uh, but this time around from uh, Python. So. We start by opening the access key. Uh, we read it. I'm not going to go into the Python syntax. That's not the point for us today. I import the weather functions. I get it just like I did previously. Now I'm uh, starting the MATLAB engine. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the previous one. Um, M dot, it closed or exit, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I guess it's closed. Is it closed? It's exit. Okay, so getting, getting back to the start, I'm starting a new engine. Uh, what I might want to do right now is not um, start an engine, but instead connect to an already running uh, MATLAB session. So what I'm going to do is 
going to put it here. And what I need for that is to type matlab.engine.share uh, engine. Right, so it's going to share this one. And it's quite cool for debugging, right? Uh, now what you need is the name of the engine, uh, engine name. And so this is a way for you to connect to this engine. Connect to this engine. Um, you can ask him the same we asked previously. What we can do is to clear all of this, right? OK, and um, like it's better for readability. Um, we can ask for that. We've done it already. If you have several um, output arguments, like an arg out, um, like, like the number of arguments that you want to output, you need to pass them like this. So here in this case, the uh, greatest common denominator you have different type of output argument you can uh, in terms of size you can get and here you need to say i want to i want to have two output arguments so five and zero and uh, in this case here uh, as you might know um, you know um, indexes start at zero with python so you you want to be mindful of that then you can play around you can uh, call the spy all right so you can call some some functions that return some uh, some figures like this one. Uh, this one is more fun, um, but so pretty much everything you can do in MATLAB, you can uh, you know call it from this uh, API. So like here, I can also define a lint space uh, with a sinus. And what I'm going to do here, and, and I wrote a small function called plot print. And uh, what it does is it's uh, plotting this as a um, as a JPEG. And then I'm outputting it uh, with this IPython display. So if you want to embed it inside of your um, notebook. So I think that's good for today. Uh, I, how are we in terms of timing? Um, yes, yeah, so we're so we're a little bit over time, Jan. So maybe mm -hmm. if we could uh, wrap it up, uh, yeah. and then we'll take a few more questions, and then we'll call it a day, if you don't mind. Perfect. So I think that's good for uh, all of this side of calling uh, MATLAB from Python. Um, a lot more here on, you know, uh, data type and, and so on. That's most of the question. We're not going to go so much in deployment today, but if you want to see uh, more on that, we've done lots of those uh, webinars and I think we're going to do a lot more. And uh, we are going to go also more in the deployment side with Ether on other sessions. So what I would recommend is What's interesting here is to generate Python libraries. You might see that uh, if you and want that if you work with colleagues that have no uh, MATLAB uh, licenses. Uh, and another thing we are seeing as well is um, how to use the production server to centralize some of uh, your work. So that's what is uh, addressed in this section and also the web app uh, server for central deployment of applications. So <clears throat> I guess that's it for today. We can wrap it and uh, conclude with uh, what we've seen. That's already quite good. Uh, and I'm very happy to, to get some feedback, some questions, and, um, and don't hesitate to reach out. So, so maybe that's one of the questions that kind of came through is, um, what would be a good way to um, share or reach out to MathWorks to kind of influence the roadmap or give feedback? What What is the right mechanism that you'd expect or prefer? Um, what I can do is share my, my um, email here ydebre at mathworks.com so you can send me an email and uh, be super happy to discuss i think that's a very direct way <laughs> very good so I'm, I'm sharing your 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 face so people can see you so throughout the presentation it was just your slide so you're a real person um so there's another question from rolf here which is uh can you sh share a few words about using python and oo classes from matlab we ran into issues in the past. I believe there's some hidden properties, not filed. Um, any changes regarding OO across the API recently? Um, I'm not aware of any changed recently. What would be good is probably to connect then for such a question directly with our, uh, you know, um, dev teams. And um, if there are like maybe some test cases or some, you know, could, could, uh, 
snippets that um, he can share with me per email, then uh, it'll be perfect to to kind of answer that precisely, I guess. Okay, very good. Um, then there's another question from Yordis who's got some eagle eyes here in your demo. He, uh, he said, quick question, how, why weren't MATLAB variables generated by Python, not in the MATLAB workspace variable sidebar? They were in the same MATLAB session, wasn't it? Um, that can be, uh, I think I, I, need, I need to go back and see indeed here, uh, I generated some variables and it seems like the workspace, you can access the workspace from um, here, the, the MATLAB workspace, like this m.workspace uh, here and the name of the variable that you want to, um, to get. Um, so that would be the way, but now indeed I don't recall which variable that I was passing to MATLAB. It's uh, probably some of these one like, Oh, no, because here they are actually just uh, forwarded directly then. Um, we don't, what, what we want, if we want to de to, uh, de to define a variable on the MATLAB side, what we need to do is to m evil uh, c something. And so here we need to define x equals zero, for instance. Sorry, Jan, you're not sharing your screen. I took off your screen. I apologize. So you need to show it again. Sorry, yeah, no, no, that's, that's my bad. What I was saying is that if you want to share explicitly uh, some here variables um, between Python on the left and MATLAB on the right, what you need to use is here uh, this evalc function. And then um, here, I think you need to ask it for, oh, not this, it's not an object. I think it's like this. There you go. So this is a mechanism to, uh, um, you know, uh, throw some 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 data at at MATLAB from Python and to get it back with the workspace. 